Welcome to Great Hope Television Series. This quarter, we are focusing on Bible and spirituality. Have you ever wondered why the life, why this life has become so stressful? You wake up early, you return, you return late. Have you been on the streets of our modern cities? Rush, rush, rush. Catching a bus, rushing where? Rushing there. In this series titled, Rest in the Midst of Restlessness, Dr. Tunde Ojawale brings us this assurance that we can find rest in the midst of our restlessness. We can find rest for our soul. God-given rest, divine rest, God-mandated rest. We encourage you to watch. And as you watch, may the Lord bring you the desired rest, that rest that you ever wanted. Have great hope in the Lord. In the of his I welcome you again to your favorite program, Great Hope. I declare concerning your life that hope will arise from obscurity for you. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord will remain your strength all the days of your life. We continue in our series, Bible and Spirituality. And today, I will be presenting on a topic that is one of my, my most favorite. And it is titled, Rest in the Mist of Restlessness. Rest in the Mist of Restlessness. Let us pray. Father God Almighty, we thank you because... You love us so much, and you have made us for rest. I pray, I plead, my Lord and my God, that we will find rest in you. As we open your word, open our hearts. I pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We live in a world of restlessness. Somebody described this world as one of a world of worry, a world of hurry, and a world of bury. So people worry, hurry, and get buried. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. We live in a world where everybody is involved in appears, in a rat race, running to nowhere. What we have set up for ourselves have stolen rest away from this generation. I don't understand, and I know God does not, how children are in a hurry to grow up, in a hurry to finish school, in a hurry to get a job, in a hurry to get married, in a hurry to get children, in a hurry to raise the kids, in a hurry to quickly send the kids out of home, in a hurry to retire, and before you know it, in a hurry to die. A world filled with human restlessness. Go to the major cities in this country. Restlessness. They don't sleep in this place. Restlessness. When you are inside your car, you raise the decibel of the sound of the music. In your house, the neighbors cannot rest because of your music. Don't talk about when you are arguing. Come on. Where is rest? But Jesus lovingly tells us in Matthew chapter 11. Oh, I love these verses. 28 and 29. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. God will give you rest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am weak, I am meek, and I am lowly in earth. And you will find rest for your soul. Jesus has designed us for rest. 
He has created us for rest. You know, I want to ask you about your job. I want to wonder if this describes you. You have been looking for your dream job for a long time. They finally called you and gave you the letter of employment. Oh, you rejoiced. But when you are going to report for duty, your employer says, I want you to begin this job with a vacation. Go on vacation and then come back and start your work after your vacation. How many got a job like that? <laughs> Nobody gives you a job like that. Come on. But by the way, I happened to get a job like that some years ago. Precisely <laughs> 2001. The first month of that job was a vacation for me. But by the way, I didn't tell you I worked for them for free for six years before they employed me fully and gave me one month of holiday. You know, so I can't come there. But that is exactly what God did. On the sixth day of creation, God created animals. And he created human beings as the last born of creation. Male and female, he created them. And he placed them in the Garden of Eden to till the garden. That was their job. But God said, don't do anything for the first day. God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he said, your first full day on this job is a vacation. You told me you never got a job like that. And I can hear you say, I will never employ nobody and give them vacation before they do anything on the job. I want to let you know that the best demonstration of God being a God of grace. Everybody say grace. grace. You don't believe in grace. You didn't say grace. Everybody say shout. I said shout grace. grace. The first full day of Man's existence was the Sabbath, the seventh day, a total day of rest. All they needed to do was to praise God and fellowship with one another and do nothing but just fellowship and praise and company with God. A day of grace. Everybody say grace. It is a day of grace. It is a day of love. It's a day of family. It's a day of relationship. It's a day of glory. It's a day of renewal. It's a day of rediscovery. It is a day of strength. It is a day of power. It is a day of fellowship with God and with man. The first full day of man's existence was a day of rest. God was saying, God was saying, I did not create you for trouble. I created you for peace. I did not create you to struggle. I created you for succor. I did not create you for problem. I created you for peace. The trouble with man is this. When you forget your God, life turns to pieces. God will give you peace in the name of Jesus. He will exchange your ashes. And he will give you a cloak of rejoicing. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want to state very clearly right here, this moment, that rest is the reason why God created you. When he gave you that spouse, it's for rest. 
If your marriage does not give you rest, there's problem in it. He gave you a job for rest. If there is no rest in that job, there's problem. God gave you the training for rest, the children for rest, a home for rest. Everything about man should define rest. If you believe the word of God, let me I hear you say amen. amen. That is why all through the Old Testament and the New, the Bible continues to remind man, human beings, that rest is the reason why he made you not restlessness. He told Moses and the people of Israel in Exodus 33, 14, my presence shall go with thee and I will give you rest. I declare today God's presence will go with you and God will give you rest. He will give you rest in your home. He will give you rest in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. He told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 13, Remember the word of the Lord to Moses, the servant of God that he commanded you, saying, The Lord of your God has given you rest. He has given you this land. The land God has given you will give you rest. Amen. Where you live will give you rest. Amen. In Joshua 21, 44, the Bible says, The Lord gave them rest round about. I love that. Rest round about means... How can you have rest in your house when your neighbor's house is burning? Rest roundabout means because of you, there will be rest in your neighborhood. Because of you, your children will have rest. Your parents will have rest in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20:20, 20, 20, the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. For his God gave him rest round about. Your God will give you rest round about. Amen. Oh, you are not answering this prayer this day. I said your God will give you rest round about. Amen. I do not know what has brought about restlessness in your life, but God will give you rest. Amen. The Sabbath is a day of rest. It is just a day. But the one who gives rest is Jesus. Come and say amen. amen. You can never keep any day holy if Jesus is not inside you. The Sabbath is not about a day. It is about Jesus. Who said, come unto me, all you who labor, I will give you rest. When you have given your life to Jesus and Jesus lives in you, rest begins in you. But God now says, you know, you have to be busy edging out a living for yourself. That is why he said you should work for how many days? Six days. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. Six days will you labor. By the way, for anyone listening to me today that is jobless, that is a promise. God, you said in the Sabbath commandment that I should work for six days, but I have no job. Provide me a job in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is a promise for you. Then the Sabbath is a day of rest because after you have been busy, I know you pray every day, God says. I know you read your Bible. But I know you are also busy making a living. I need a day of uninterrupted fellowship no ghost law of your city i want a day to bless you i want to hang out with you i want to play with you i want ask me anything you want on this day it is god's day you know whatever was created or manufactured there is always the signature of the person who drew it or who made it on it. If you take your Jalopy car, whole beat up, whatever car it is, and you take the signature of Mercedes and you put it on it, and the, it was not Mercedes that made it, whom are you deceiving? In fact, somebody can even say, we'll sue you 
for putting a different name on a different thing. God, after he made the world in six days, he made the Sabbath his signature. I, I wish I can ask you as you are watching today, what's your birthday? Let me ask one of my friends in the audience, what's your birthday? January 3. From today, I'm changing your birthday. Because I'm the preacher, you're not. Your birthday now is December 3. No, I said I'm, ch I'm the preacher, not you. <laughs> Can you change your birthday? God created the world in six days. And he made the Sabbath the birthday. As you cannot change your birthday, you dare not attempt to change the birthday of the world. It is a day of repose. A day of rest. And somebody says, how do I know the Sabbath? So I can have rest from my restlessness in Jesus. So I can have rest on the 24 hour period. He put aside not to walk. Oh, that's not a problem. Acts. But the Bible, the Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath. The seventh day, how do I know how to count? Oh, the Bible answers that too. Just read the Gospels that tell about the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. In Luke chapter 23, for instance, from verse 51 to the end. He says the day Jesus was crucified was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. Everybody knows Jesus was crucified on Friday. The day that follows Friday is what? And they went and kept Saturday Sabbath according to the commandments of God. And that's why they came on the third day, Sunday, and found Jesus rose up. Oh, I'm still wondering, how else do I know? Well, when did Jesus resurrect? What day do we celebrate the resurrection? Sunday. But the Bible calls it not Sunday, Monday. It tells us what it is. Luke chapter 24 from verse 1. Matthew 28 from verse 1. Mark 16 from verse 1. You will see in all of this record that the day of resurrection is called the first day. Everybody say first day. So if Sunday is the first day, I know you can count where you're watching or where you're here. And you can count one to seven from Sunday. The seventh has to be what, everyone? Saturday. So Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It's a day of repose. It's a day of rest. It's a day of fellowship. It's a day of joy. It's a day when heaven comes down to earth. And God says, tell me anything you want, and I'll do it for you. I have time for you. Because I know you're busy, but I want you to not share the time with me at all. A young boy said to his parent, my 10-year birthday will be to invite my friends home, and we are going to have front seats at a ball game. It was an expensive game and an expensive seat. But if that's what you want, well, we'll invite your friends and give them expensive tickets to go watch the game at a good seat. And they did. The boy's plan was to enjoy the time with his friends. As soon as they got to the game, his friends scattered and were playing with other friends. And they left the birthday boy alone alone when the game was over he did not even find his friends he went back alone i cannot but wonder god has invited you to celebrate the birthday of the world and you are busy shopping busy doing all kind of stuff on the birthday to rejoice in the birth of the world if we keep the sabbath there will be no one believing in evolution. There will be no one acting in hatred to another. There will be no one believing that they came out of ape of amoeba. Without the rest, Sunday becomes a sin day. 
Monday becomes a morning day. Tuesday becomes a tears day. Wednesday becomes a day where you lose and you are whining. Thursday becomes a day of trouble. Friday becomes a day of fear. Without the day of rest to look forward to. I like the way Paul puts it in Hebrews chapter 4. There remains a rest for the people of God. Isaiah says in chapter 66, we will not only observe the Sabbath here on earth. In heaven, we will observe the Sabbath from month to month. As I leave you today, God invites you to embrace the rest in Jesus. And a day of rest from your restlessness is the answer to the restlessness in your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he give you rest from every trouble of life. As your heart opens to the word of God, may you embrace the Sabbath rest also. May you and your family, throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, enjoy the Sabbath of rest with God Almighty. So shall he be with you. So shall it be with your family. Amen. Now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want the rest from your restlessness, say a louder amen. amen. Until next week, when the title of my sermon in this series will be Godly Violence. I say, there is hope for you. Amen. amen.